Shalom, this is Quay. I am very excited in my spirit today. Uh, we're in Revelation chapter 5, and we are ready to start in verse 11. And I'm just going to dig in uh, right from here. If you didn't see the previous teachings, try to uh, go back and look at those and get caught up. So uh, here we are, chapter uh, 5, verse 11. This is John reporting this tremendous event. He says, Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, and the living creatures, and the elders. Their number was myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands. That's just a way of saying beyond counting. And they were singing with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We've talked before that in the heavenly realm where spiritually we are already, if we are born again in Jesus Christ, we have access to heavenly worship with him. And um, this time, uh, John says, many, many angels uh, that are there are joining. And... Uh, the living creatures, they're still involved. And the 24 elders representing the full priesthood of believers. And we're singing again. This is a sevenfold worship unto the Lord. Did you notice? Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and might, and honor, and glory, and blessing. Seven, a complete exaltation of the Lord. Now, doesn't he already have all power? Yes, so why does it say he's worthy to receive? Because we are giving him any power that he has shared with us, we're giving it back to him, acknowledging that we don't have any power of our own and we're not trying to hold on to it for our own benefits. Uh, riches, anything that we have. And that does not, that's not just, uh, you know, financial riches uh, or, or uh, you know, um, gems or jewels or gold. Uh, it's spiritual riches, but everything that he's given to us, we're giving it back again, just like they laid down their crowns. Uh, wisdom, any wisdom that we have, we're acknowledging it comes from you. Uh, we're, we're receive it again from us. We don't have anything else to offer you, just, just our little humble hearts, and we're offering you what you've given to us, and might and honor and glory and blessing. This is a wonderful refrain to offer to the Lord. Uh, and then in verse 13, And I heard every creature in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and on the sea and everything in them responding to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and power forever and ever. A fourfold blessing is given, and this is speaking of a time that uh, this particular aspect, I believe, is definitely uh, yet to come. Uh, the, the ultimate fulfillment, I believe, here, you know, is yet to come. And yet, we can, like I said, we can even now participate in the worship that is being offered at his throne. And we have the pattern here of 
what pure worship truly is. But there's going to come a time. Uh, Jesus has been given the name above all names and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. And there's going to be every creature, every creature, man, woman, child, from every age, every angelic creation, even the ones who rebelled, uh, will acknowledge uh, at one time every animal, everything that God created together. Oh, hallelujah. Will give glory to the Father and to the Lamb. And the four living creatures kept saying, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. What beautiful, holy, pure worship that we are able to begin to offer to our Lord even now, even in our mortal bodies through the Spirit, by our Spirit, we can join in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. There's other, Psalm 96 speaks of this. Uh, verse 13, you can, uh, you can find parallels and, uh, Scripture confirming Scripture, Exodus 20, verse 11, Psalm 96, verse 11, Psalm 146, verse 6, Amos 9, 6, Haggai 2, 6. Look those up. Have a worship ministry unto the Lord, and he will, uh, he cannot help but pour back into you as you worship him, but worship him, let us worship him just because he's worthy, just because he's worthy. And this is the foundation. These first five chapters are the foundation now as we will move forward in Revelation as the seals begin to be broken and the Lord Jesus Christ begins to administer the transition from one age to another. Hallelujah. He is the only one. It's all under his lordship. It's all under his timing. We get to find out uh, the most tremendous spiritual intelligence reports on what the enemy will do and will attempt to do. We will gain understanding in how we can uh, be, uh, be stable and worshiping the Lord in the days in which we live, how we can intercede for peoples to come to the knowledge of the Lord how we can uh, stand with authority to uh, understand that even now uh, the Lord will have us to declare and decree and exert the authority of Jesus to destroy the works of the evil one because there are many things the enemy is doing in our day that are crossing boundaries that uh, attempting to cross boundaries set up by the Lord, he's looking for his priests. He's looking for those who will dedicate themselves to standing before him, to watching and listening, being sensitive to what uh, is going on in the heavenly realm and uh, how things are manifesting in the earth. Hallelujah. It's not a time for fear. It's really a time for, for cheer. And I don't mean that in a uh, superficial way. There are things that are disturbing in our world. There are things that really 
uh, do evoke a concern and a even a grief in us. Those things should be turned into intercession uh, and declaration as the Lord leads. But there is also a core of cheer. Jesus said, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. We are to be overcomers. That's what he said to all the churches. I really want you to overcome. And uh, so the priesthood of believers, we are overcomers. I bless you as you uh, continue to study and uh, present yourself before the Lord. God bless you.